All right, folks, and welcome Tech Nivers here. Today, we are looking at the in-browser slicer on Creality Cloud. So we're going to jump right over to creality.cloud.com slash model. If you haven't already registered, go ahead and register. It's free, and then log yourself in. And what we're going to do is we're going to upload a 3D model because we want to be able to slice our own model. So let's go ahead and find one that we would like. I have some STLs here. We're just going to grab a random one and drag and drop. Oh, I dragged it to the wrong place. Let's do that up here. There we go. All right, so we now have the model. And this is apparel. Leave it on share. I don't have any pictures to upload. This is a custom pauldron for Magic the Gathering armor. All right, I'm just kind of rushing through this. I don't, I'm not really in too big of a hurry. So, uh, model source, this is the original. Don't need to copyright it. I have the model. We'll hit submit. And oh, I have to choose a copyright license. Just pick one. Hey folks, Technivorous here. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button, but stick around because today we're going to be talking about some pretty interesting stuff I don't think you're going to want to miss. And here we are. Now as you can see, not anything too major to see here. I don't have a picture of it uploaded, so it's not really going to show me anything. What we're interested in is this right here. You hit Cloud Slice and it pulls you into the browser slicer. So here is my model. It's obviously way too large for this build plate, but let's pick the right printer. They have the CR series, the Ender series, and there are some others in here. Yes, it is only Creality printers, but they no longer are relying on Kira's external build. Although, you'll see in a minute that I have my suspicions that this is Kira basically browserized. So, um, still pretty, pretty cool. Um, object can exceed max print size. So, I need to scale the model here. So, um, let's do... 12%. All right, that's better. I had a little bit of a, a scaling issue there, but I think we figured it out. So, um, basically to manipulate the model, I'm gonna rotate here and scale here. There are some other options as well. We'll check those out in just a second. First, let's select our printer. We're gonna do an Ender 3v2. And it resized our model, so we'll go ahead and back it down again. And there we go. Okay, so now we need our print settings, and those are going to be under basic parameters. Here you have the shell, the infill, your temperature settings, and support. Okay, down here is your build plate adhesion. So let's go ahead and grab a brim just for safety's sake. Uh, yeah, we want to generate support, stuits, touching build plate, and temperature we're going to change to 215. Hot bed is fine, infill. We're going to change to 15%. Grid is fine. Wall thickness, 1.2 millimeters. Top and bottom thickness, uh, 1.2 millimeters. Just to have them kind of be uniform. Um, and hide Z seam. Okay, so we have our parameters here. Um, there are some advanced parameters as far as material settings and quality, speed, things like that. Uh, these are basically already all dialed in for the printer that I selected, so there's no reason to mess with these. I can still get a really epic print just using the settings that are in here. So let's go ahead and hit the slice button. Slicing is beginning. It is all done online. It is doing this real quick here. And let's see what we get. And here we have our finished slice file. As you can see, it's still slicing, so it's saying zero bytes and zero layers. But you can check out the parameters here and see what exactly we use to slice it. And when it is done slicing, you will have a download option here as well. So it does take a little bit. It is using background processing power on their server. So obviously, it's not going to run as fast as a slicer on your dedicated machine, which is basically the only downfall of this um, however the slices have uh, that I've seen have come out really nice they do have a bunch of models that you can choose from and a lot of these have already been sliced and pre-sliced for your printer so uh, definitely worth checking this out again this is creality.cloud.com slash model to get to this if you just go to creality.cloud.com you'll get the home setting here and here 
um, you can just click on to the model library and from any of those models you can open the slicer so basically if I wanted to do the brass knuckles here I could click that and then hit cloud slice and it would bring me to the slicer with this model loaded so very very cool as I showed you earlier it's pretty simple to upload your own models and the print quality is pretty pretty nice I will show that to you in another video I'm actually running this on two of my machines right now so far they're turning out splendidly but they're for a specific video so I can't really show you them I don't want to drop any spoilers so stay tuned to see the print quality definitely check these guys out and see if this is an option for you because like I said now that you're doing this this way you really don't have to worry about having Kira or updating your own slicer or anything like that they're gonna take care of any bugs or quirks or anything like that basically on their end and it'll save your computer a lot of processing power the only downfall is that it takes a little bit in the background to do what it needs to do so that's not too bad um, this is a very straightforward process and very very simple I had a really good time just jumping right in and using it it's pretty self-explanatory my main gripe with this right here the only thing I don't really like is that the rotation and um, panning seem to be uh, opposite buttons from what I'm used to but they do both still work they both work really well this is a beautiful visual and yeah you can't go wrong definitely give it a shot uh, Creality needs some points for doing free stuff like this when you see so many people like Kira uh, going the pay to play way and allowing people to host models on the Creality Cloud and uh, host their own slices and having an, an in-browser in slicer that actually functions properly uh, that is pretty pretty cool especially if you're just getting into printing kinda makes Creality a one-stop shop for everything you need they have printers they have filament they have hardware they now have their own web-based slicer and really really good quality company quality machines all around you really don't hear too much bad talk about Creality you know this is one of the first times I've used Creality Cloud um, I've tended to stay away from it because I don't need really all my printers to be on a wireless network um, I cycle through printers too quickly in reviews and things like that so it's not really worth it for me to go through uh, hooking them all up to the network and, and keeping them on there uh, there's just too much movement going on basically in my shop here so um, that's gonna be it for this video guys I hope this was helpful I hope you enjoyed this definitely check it out leave a like on this video hit that subscribe button down below and I will see you in the next one Stick around guys, I got another YouTube recommended video for you right here, and if you haven't already, subscribe, 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 make sure that you smash that like button. We'll see you in the next one, Technivorous out.